Hello fellow researchers in this session you will learn how to write abstract of a research article writing an abstract is like writing everything written in all other sections of the research article within the word limits prescribed by the target journal it looks easy but is very skillful activity i'm going to address and answer two basic issues like number 1 when to write the abstract and the other is how to take out abstract information objectively from other sections of your research article towards the end of this session i will also discuss some common mistakes which creep in inadvertently while we are writing the abstract are you ready to take the important notes and tips let's begin while writing abstract keep in mind three important consideration number 1 the abstract is the first section that is read by the journal editors when deciding whether to send your manuscript for review or reject it number 2 once published the abstract is the first section to be read in many cases it is the only section that is available to the reader most of the literature databases index only abstracts and the access to full text article is often restricted and number 3 a well worded concise abstract is the best tool to communicate your research to the scientific community so coming to the first question when to write the abstract when we read scientific research articles first we read the abstract so what do you think should we write abstract first you are right this section comes in the end when writing a research article the right sequence of writing the research article is to begin with material methods followed by results discussion and introduction including the literature review and then comes the writing of abstract section when you have written all other sections it is easy to condense all the aspects of your work into a concise summary and the abstract to begin with go through your paper and highlight its most important sentences in each section of introduction methods results discussion and conclusions then use these sentences as an outline to write the abstract at this point it is also important to check your target journals abstract guidelines for example some journals require a structured abstract with the discrete section and most journal impose a strict word count limit in the abstract section so let's check which information from the introduction section should be included in the abstract first two to three sentences of the abstract must inform the readers about why you have undertaken this research and what it is about i'm giving an example from my own latest research work so the first sentence of the abstract is the ultraviolet germicidal radiations have been shown to inactivate all pathogens tested so far but had limited applications due to their deleterious effects on human skin and eyes the second sentence i have written is this necessitated the designing of devices which can safely be used in households these two introductory sentences describe the problem and the aim of the study i believe such introductory statements can easily draw the attention of the reader the next session might go on to describe what information is lacking in the field or what the previous researchers have done to try to address this problem such statements can lead very naturally into a statement of how research addresses the issue in a unique way you may prefer to use introductory phrases such as here we aimed to da da dash or here we demonstrate that to indicate to the reader that you are stating the aim of your work now let's check which information from method section should be included the methods sub section of the abstract should summarize the basic design of the study and should briefly state the key techniques used in the experiments examples could be like number 1 abstract in biological or clinical fields should mention the organisms cell lines or populations studied the abstract in ecology papers should mention the location of the study and abstracts in clinical trials should mention the sample size patient groups dosages and study duration i found a meticulously worded one sentence description of methods subsection of a very well cited research article and it goes 100 consecutive consenting male in patients in a state of moderately severe uncomplicated alcohol withdrawal at screening were randomized to receive either drug x at the rate of 
A milligram per day or drug Y B milligram per day with dosing down titrated to zero in a fixed dose schedule across eight treatment days. Coming to the next question, that is, which information from results section should be included in the abstract section? The main reason that people are reading the abstract is to learn about your findings. Therefore, the results subsection should be the longest part of your abstract and you should try to maximize the amount of details you include here. For example, statements such as significant differences in body weight were observed between the animals in group A and B are not very informative. Instead, consider making more specific statements such as the average body weight loss of the animals in group A was greater than that of the animals in group B 20.4 plus minus 0.3 gram versus 8.4 plus minus 0.6 gram p less than 0.01 here the p value effectively conveys that the difference was significant thus word significant is no longer required in the test the next question is to which information from the discussion and conclusion section should be included in the abstract i will recommend that the last couple of sentences should mention the overall conclusions if you check some good research publication you will notice that authors use phrases such as our study revealed that da, 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 or overall we conclude that da, da, da. then they state their main findings very concisely if you have serendipity and interesting findings do mention those as well the last sentence of abstract should preferably state the implications of major findings or describe how your work has added scientific information in the existing knowledgeful to make readers understand the importance of your findings. Just to remind you, please note that many readers have access to abstract only and don't have access to the full manuscript or entire set of data. They take your conclusions at face value. Therefore, it is very important not to overstate the conclusions so as not to mislead your readers. Coming to the last part of the lesson, know what are the common mistakes in writing abstract. The abstract usually carries a strict word count limit. Combining all the most important aspects of your work into a paragraph of 250 words or less is a tough job. If there is need to reduce the word count, what should be avoided? For example, the abstract should not contain number one citations, number two lengthy literature review because readers are more interested in your study results rather than the previous work of other researchers. Number three, routine laboratory procedures which are well established and well known. Number four, statistical methods or softwares used in your study. Number five, undefined abbreviations or acronyms. And number six, results or interpretations that are not discussed in the text. So here are the bonus tips. Number one, once you have completed the abstract, check that all the information agrees with the information in the main body of the research article text number two get it vetted from a colleague working in a separate discipline ask your colleague whether the study is clear based solely on the abstract this will help you to determine which areas of the abstract will require revisions either to clarify the meaning or to highlight the major findings thank you very much subscribe this channel and keep watching other videos on technical writing how to write research article and other chapters